Hello, welcome to Paleo Greenbird. I'm Greenbird, and today's video is going to be another flint napping video. And today I'm going to use a nice, beautiful piece of banded obsidian. I don't know how much of the bandedness that the uh, camera is picking up here, but trust me when I say this is a beautiful piece of banded obsidian. Um, I can't remember if this came from Mexico or if it came from Oregon. Um, it's a little bit, you know, it's got some. A little bit rough. It's a rough spall. It's been kicking around for a little while. Um, I have also gotten feedback that my camera wasn't close enough for you guys to see. So, David, let me know if this is a little bit easier for you to see. Hopefully, it is. And don't worry, that Aggie point's coming up too. Uh, I've just been really into uh, percussion lately, so I'm really trying to get that out of my system. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and make a little biface, maybe get it to a preform, depending on how how long it takes and just see what we can do here. So, as One thing I'd like to point out is that you can see on this particular piece, and hopefully the camera can pick it up, it seems like it always does pick it up better than what I see in the screen, but right here you have a big bulb of percussion, they call it, and that's basically when they're taking the, uh, like when they spall the nodule, it flakes off and you always get this bulb that um, that forms, that's what they call it, that's why they call it the bulb of percussion. It's caused by percussion. But anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. So, first thing I'm going to do here is take my medium sized billet. And I'm going to trim this up a little. I've got some pieces that I know, is, that I know isn't really going to be of much use. So, I'll start by just kind of trimming this, these pieces off that I know I'm not going to really need. And that's a pretty thick chunk, so I'm, I'm actually going to throw that in my, my pile. Just trimming the edges. I'm just taking off what wants to come off anyway. I don't know if it's my imagination or not, but it seems like banded obsidian, uh, rainbow obsidian, black obsidian, it just seems like it's so much messier than the mahogany. I don't know, maybe it's just the color, maybe it's cause, just because it's clearer, you can see through it a little bit better. Um, okay, so where am I at here? Let's take a little off here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take off the weak points, the points that's going to break if I hit it anyway. No use even trying to work those. You're not going to get anything out of it. So get a nice solid initial piece. Okay. So I can see on this side right here, I don't really have any platforms, and I know I'm going to need to take off that thick point. So I'm just going to try and make a couple. switch over to this side here. There we go. I try and flip it over just to zigzag it a little bit. Just because that works for me doesn't mean you have to do it, but that's what works for me. Always, when you're Taking off these pieces, always just try and see, you know, how can you take it off where maybe it's going to leave you a platform for later. Oh, there's a nice flake. I didn't mean to do that, but I'm, I'm going to put that in my pile. It's a nice flake. All right, so I'm getting to the point now where I can actually start intentionally taking off some flakes. My tools over to this other side here because it's easier for me. So as usual, I'm going to try and work the thick parts first. I still need to do a little bit of cleanup right here. Right here, you can see it's pretty, still pretty junky. And never, I'm not really ever going to get a good platform going in any of those directions, so I might as well just clean it up now. Let's get rid of that. Just a little bit of cleanup. You know, unless you get a really clean grade A 
spall from a place like you know Neolithics or Flint uh, go napping. If you get it from you know people who sell those raw materials, you're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup. But that's good. But that teaches you how to clean the stone up and get it ready to go. I say that when it's a little too thin, but all right, so I'm starting to get somewhere. So now I'm going to start taking some intentional thinning flakes. I think I'm going to start right here. Ouch! Wow, this stuff is really sharp. I'm going to grind the edges so I don't do that again. I think I just cut myself. Obsidian is sharper. It's, it's the sharpest thing you can ever encounter. It's so much sharper than a razor blade will ever be. So it's a good idea, even after you've shaped up a little bit, just grind the whole thing. Keep yourself, keep you from cutting yourself. I don't like working with obsidian because I can just feel it all over myself. But anyway, that's what I have on hand at the moment. I got tons of it, so I want to get rid of it. See, I got a little bleeder there. All right, so there's this nice ridge. There's this nice ridge right off this platform that goes all the way down here. That's what I'm going to try and take. And that'll be a nice thinning flake. That'll do it. If I can get that to go all the way across to overshot, although it might be hard because there's a little bit of a, not, it's not a step fracture or maybe like a, I guess it could be a hinge. It's some sort of little lip thing right here. But I'm going to see if I can do it anyway. I'm going to use a medium billet. Grind it real good. Yeah, I'm bleeding everywhere. It's alright, that happens. If you're afraid to bleed, don't pick up flint napping. It's not for you. Beautiful. Put the flake back on there. So this is what I got. Sorry, I'm not used to having the camera this close. So this, it's a broken flake, but look at that. Got all this and all of that. Good, good workable flakes, and look at how I thin that out. That was, I, could, I couldn't ask for a better strike than that. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I got lucky. All right, so. Clean it up a little bit. With obsidian, you're always cleaning it up. I think I'm going to work off the natural ridge that that last flake left me. I build myself a little platform here. Real gentle. You don't, want, you don't want to hit this like you do the hard stones. You just got to be gentle. But I do need to give it a little bit of smack to make that next platform. There we go. Alright. I just gave myself a nice little platform right there. You can see the low point, I hope. There's that low point compared to the ridge I'm going to take. I love banded obsidian, it's so beautiful. And actually, as I look at this stone, I think I might save that platform. I need to do something about this thick part right here on this side. So I'm going to switch gears real quick and I'm going to take this platform right here. You always want to keep an eye on things because if one part of your stone gets thicker than the other, you risk shocking it, breaking it. See if I can get as nice of a flake on this one as I did on that other one, huh? Not 
not really, but I did thin it. Let's see if we can get another another one off on that. I build myself a plant farm right here. I've got one sort of made, but I want a good one. With obsidian, you want nice, good, solid platforms. This one's mediocre, but I'm going to take it anyway because I feel like it's the last platform I'm going to get on this side. I'm going to have to come at it from the other end. There we go. Aggressively. There's my flake. You can see it right there. That's the flake. So we're starting to flat this thing, flatten this thing out. But I am starting to get a hump in the middle, so I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about that. I need to make sure I can, I can take care of that. I don't think it'll be a problem though. So I'm gonna grind, so I don't cut myself. I'm just gonna grind the whole thing. I'm gonna grind away from me, because with obsidian, if you grind both directions, it'll just end up in your face, and in your hair, and in your skin. I don't know. Need to burn through this obsidian so I can get to some of the harder stone. I have some. It's just packed away. find a platform. I'm trying to be a little bit cognizant of that hump I have in the middle. I'd like to find a ridge that will take that out. If you can't see it, it's that little turtley spot right in the middle. I think what I'm going to do is build myself a platform right here. I'm going to isolate it a little bit. I haven't gone over isolated platforms yet, but I will. I don't think I have anyway. It's just what it sounds. It's nothing complicated. It's just when you make a platform and you isolate it, you just make sure that that platform, instead of being, you know, just a low spot, make sure that it's it, it's more of a smile. That way, you, you can kind of control your flake a little bit better. And I'm not sure how this platform is going to work because I've got some kind of wonky stuff in there. But I'm going to grind it and see what I can get out of it. Smack it and see what happens. So for the best. Need a little bit of luck on this one. Oh, and I got it. I got it too. So some of my some of my flake fell apart, but what's left of it is the part that I was worried about. This part right here. Left me a little bit of a hinge, but I can definitely clean that up on the other side. So I got I got lucky on that. That was great. That's exactly what I wanted. And you can see even right here, even though I got See if I can get it in the camera. Even though I have a little bit of a hinge right here, almost on the other, uh, directly on the other side, I have a platform. So I can clean it up from the other side. That's fantastic. That's the wonderful thing I like about napping is, you know, you can have as much skill, not that I have a lot, but you can have as much skill as you want, but you still never know what the stone is gonna do, what inclusions it has in it gonna have a bad attitude that day so when you get that nice clean flake especially on a on a flake where you're wondering what's gonna happen and you're hoping to get past some of the imperfections of your platform the imperfections of the ridge that you're following and and so forth and when you get that nice clean flake that you weren't sure you're were gonna get it just feels really good uh, it's a lot like playing pool I guess wasn't quite as great, but I guess I should stop jinxing myself. I'm going to try and take it again. Still shaping as I go. Never, never forgetting about that. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to leave that step for now. I'm going to move on to something different. 
because I see a nice platform I should take over here. So if you can see it, I've got the uh, thick ridge right here. It's thicker than the rest of my stone. Well, kind of thicker. I'm going to try and take that out right now with that platform right there. Oh, that's my platform. There's a few of them. Yep, there it is. This is a small flake, so I'm just going to hit it gently. Crushing the edge there. That means I was hitting too much down and not enough in. Grind it and try again. Ugh, a little better, but not really that great. So usually, what, what I do when that happens is I just I walk away from it. I'll come back to it another time. I see another one here I can take. the flake on there but you see where I'm coming from and then now I'm gonna take that thick flake right here that's the one I was gonna take before come across this ridge right here nice platform right there couldn't ask for anything better so I hope I don't screw this one up this is really fun I love percussion I mean I, I love um, pressure flaking too but there's just something about percussion when you get this big looking rock that looks like it's nothing and you start breaking it down into a nice preform. Ooh, ooh that was a bad hit. Let me grind and try that again. It's just a really good feeling. It's iffy, but I'm going to try it anyway. There we go. Hit it with a little extra. Most of my flake went away, but you can see right here. of it. Still did the job. There we go. So as we start to get thinner, now is when we really want to be conscious of our thick spots. I do have a th thick spot over here. This side here is giving me a little bit of trouble. So I'm going to try and take that out. If I'll try and take it from this side. I'm gonna isolate this. Whenever you want it, whenever you're trying to get your pre, uh, your I'm sorry, your platform to drive a flake in a specific direction, you, you, it's really important to isolate. And again, I'll do a video on isolate, but it's it's not rocket science. Isolate is just what it sounds like. You're just isolating that platform instead of having a, a platform that goes along with the rest of the contour of the rock. This one, you have the platform and then the rest of the rock is kind of chiseled out next to it. That way it forces your flake to go exactly where you want it to go. I mean, and technically, I suppose you can always isolate your platforms if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. As you start to thin the rock, it becomes more and more necessary. I mean, maybe, not always. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer that there's really no hard and fast rules when it comes to flint mapping. You start to get the feel of it. There are things that work really well for others that don't for others. I'm, I kind of have a big billet here, but I'm going to use it anyway. There we go. Nice long flake. See if I can save that. So here's my flake. That was an overshot. Went all the way across the stone. Again, I'm sorry, I'm not used to having the 
camera this close, but I hope you can see this. It went all the way across. So that was a nice thinning flake. So we're really we're starting to get there. So I'm just kind of spinning the rock around trying to find the best spot. I think I'm going to do a little trimming. I'm not going to do it freehand. I'm going to stay on the pad so I don't break anything. Another platform I'm going to take. Or I found another place where I can make a platform rather. When you're trying to make a platform, if you want whatever side, if you want the platform on the bottom, just flip the stone up, tip it towards you a little bit, and just hit straight down, and you'll automatically see how I did that. I don't know if you can. Hopefully, the camera's picking that up. You can see how it creates a concavity. Well, yeah, I guess that if you flip it over as concavity, and that concavity is what becomes your platform. So, once you're done grinding, just grind some more. Still gonna use the big bopper. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna build it down for this one. I'm gonna use my little bopper. And just hit a little extra hard. Yeah, that worked perfect. Okay. Just do a little bit of clean up here. platform here. It's not isolated, but it's close enough. Wasn't perfect, but it'll work. I've got a thick spot here I'm just trying to clean up. This video might be a little bit longer than I anticipated because of it. But All right, I need to grind. Get a little impatient here, and I'm not grinding, but that's a bad mistake to make. There we go. That was good. You can hear it. You'll start to hear when it's a good hit. But I still have some. My center line is going to be a little. I'm going to have to do some work on my center line because it's a little bit rough here. I'm going to do some shaping real quick. I'm going to do this free napping. Bugs are starting to come out. It's always a bonus. I'm just trying to get this into a general shape. Like real general. I'm not looking for like an arrowhead or a spear point. I'm just looking for something that's oval. Maybe if I can, skinnier on one side than the other, but again, it's not my goal. Alright, because I still have a ton of thinning I have to do. Alright. Alright, so in doing that, I gave myself some platforms. it up. I'm going to grind the whole thing so I don't end up cutting myself. I'm kind of cheating today. I'm using a glove. I don't always use a glove, but um, I don't know. I usually, sometimes I get cut and I don't really feel like getting cut. 
but you don't need a glove, it's not necessary. Just gotta make sure you grind all those edges and just be extra careful. edges on that side. Alright, let's see if we can clean it up. Sometimes when you're making those platforms and you're hitting straight down, you can get some cru crushed edges if you're not careful. Which is what I got. You can kind of see it there probably. Try and clean up the other side. Go. That wasn't bad. That's a nice flat flake. sound you want to hear. Nice. And I've got a platform here that's really low. If you can see that, it's really low. But I need to take that anyway because I need to thin that out. So I'm just going to have to hope that my form is good enough to make up for the crappy platform. But I, oh, I could break this right here. Let's see what happens. I'm going to give myself lots of nice end support here, nice back support. I don't want any any shock going through this, because this is, a, this is a time when I can really break this if I'm not careful. In fact, I'm going to build it down. There we go. Nice, almost overshot. Glad I did. See that? Okay, right up. I'm glad I built it down. That was a smart move. I'm going to use that same small billet coming across the other side to finish off that flake. What I did was I flipped it over. I'm just finishing off wherever the flake stopped. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to come across again, finish that off. Same thing though, lots of support because my end is a little thick. Oh, that was a, got myself a nice big step. That's not good. I'm gonna have to clean that up, but that's okay. I can do that. So I'm gonna build it up. That's probably what I should have done before. Never forget the shape. Always keep shaping, especially now. spot down here at the bottom I'm going to take before I clean it up. Sometimes, even though I want to clean that step up really bad, sometimes, you know, if, you, if it's getting really thick at the bottom, you got to keep that in mind too. I can always come back and clean it up, but I don't want to get it so fat on one side that I end up breaking it because of end shock. So I'm going to, and plus this, this flake here that I'm going to take, that will help clean up some of that step. But I'll still need to come back and finish cleaning them. So again, really good back support, end support. I don't want to break this now. Hit it with a little bit of force there. There we go. See, so now look what happened. So cleaned up that fat spot. This is this is where my nasty step is. And then look, I've got a nice platform right here that will run down. Hope the camera's picking this up. I can't see anything, but hopefully it'll run down that ridge right there and clean that up. If 
I can keep from breaking it. Yeah, you know what? This this tip is really really thick. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and thin this tip out a little bit before I do that. So I'm gonna build myself some platforms. Again, lots of support here. All right, so a little itty bitty platform, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Lots of back support, tip support, support everywhere you can, and pray to the flint napping gods that you don't break it. I didn't. Okay, good. Create another little platform on the other side. Take that one. Lots of support. I'm going to build it down actually. Shaping. Oh, that's, oh God, that's a monster. Okay. Use my, my medium belt to do a little bit of shaping. I flip it over every once in a while just so I'm not getting, not creating a turtle on myself. Yeah, I can already see this, some symmetry issues, but that's all right. I can fix that. I get to the tip, I'm using a smaller billet because so I'm just trying to take off little itty bitty pieces and give myself a platform. Just trying to thin that tip out so that it doesn't break on me when I start to work the other side. You always want your middle the thickest and right now my middle is the thinnest so that's, that's not optimal. That's not where I want to be but sometimes you can't help it. That's just where you end up. As much support as I can. Try not to break this. Whack it and see what happens. All right, so I'm taking care of that tip pretty good. Let's work on that middle section where that step fracture is. I'm going to stay with this smaller billet. Took off a good flake. It did sound like it crushed a lot, but it, it actually took off a decent flake. You kind of dig it into that one side, one side though. So when it comes to shaping, you know sometimes you have to work with what you have. I, I've got to get those steps out. So if that means I have to make the point a different shape, then that's what it means. Right, there we go. Nice overshot flake. Or not overshot. Almost overshot. But a nice. Big flake went all the way across. Almost all the way across. Not quite, but enough. So this is what we have so far. Kind of ugly looking, but we can fix that up. Not a big deal. Right now I'm just trying to thin, keep my shape, think about my center line, which, which right now I have, I, my center line is a little bit wonky because I have, it kind of scoops a little bit if you can see that. So I'm going to have to think about that when I'm taking flakes. Where do I want to take the flakes to bring my center line back to where it needs to be? I'm going to start by back here. Get rid of this thick spot. Using my small billet. I don't need to take giant flakes. Right now I'm just trying to kind of feather everything together. Give it that 80s haircut. So when you're correcting your center line, just take wherever you want, whatever you need to lower or raise your center line, just make your platform accordingly. You know, 
if you need to raise it, make your platform lower, vice versa. Hope that makes sense. If not, just ask in the comments. Whenever you raise your platform, I mean, whenever you lower your platform, it's going to automatically raise your center line after you take that strike. I mean, I suppose that could be depending on how you're looking at it, but. Once you start to get thin like this, you want to make sure you get lots of support. It's easy to get into a rush. Try and finish it off and get all antsy, and then the next thing you know, you end up with two points instead of one. It happens all the time. There we go. So now, I think what I'm going to do, if you can see the way this is shaped, what's going on here. I have a nice platform right here and right here. So I need to decide which one, to, which one I'm going to take. I think I'm going to take this one because if I take this one, uh, let me try and get there. If I take this one to come all the way across, it'll make it easier when I take this one. I always try and think what's going to give you the, the most reduction of the stone. And once I take those two flakes, it's going to be pretty much the same amount of thinness, I guess, all the way across. I'm going to have to worry. I'm going to have to start worrying again about shaping a little better. Okay, oh. Get that kind of aggressive on purpose, but it left me with a little bit of a step, so I'm going to have to try and clean it up from the other side. this other platform first so just the way the because it's it's hard to explain but because the way the rock is shaped if I don't take this other platform first I'll end up with a turtle shaping before I get too tempted to fix all those errors. Just trying to get a little bit of a little bit of symmetry to this. Chickens are starting to attack me if you can't hear them. symmetrical. Doesn't have to be perfect, just close enough to where 
once you start working on the point, you don't find yourself having to be like, oh my god, how do I make this thing look like an arrowhead? And it's, e it's easy to get lost in the process, too, and end up at that place. Trust me. So, this is what we have so far. Little biface. It's not a preform yet, but it's a good, good little biface. I think I'm going to take a flake with my, off the bottom here. Just try and thin that base off a little bit. Again, I'm not going over every single detail because I assume if you've watched my videos and other videos, you probably have already heard those, but maybe something in this video will help you. Don't eat that. Hey, Rue. Okay. All right, so at this point, I'm definitely going gonna, gonna to belt it down for a little bit. some cleanup flakes. Oof, still got some work to do on the tip though. This one's not really, this isn't my best work. I promise you if I break this, I'll still post it. trying to take a little bit more off the tip. I seem to have a thick tip and um, I just don't want to end up with end shock. I don't want to have to clean it up at the end. If it's going to break, I'd rather have it do it now. But so far, so good. <laughs> 